Okay, in this video, we're going to do two examples of epsilon delta proofs for linear functions. Um, they're pretty straightforward. I'm going to dive right in. Um, so let's take a look at the first one. So we want to prove that the limit as x approaches negative 2 of the quantity x over 4 plus 6 is equal to 11 halves. Um, so we're trying to prove this. So to do that, there are two absolute value inequalities um, that are in the definition of the limit. So there's another video where I talk a little more about the definition of a limit. Um, these are the two inequalities. I always write them down before I start this um, because uh, transforming them is kind of pivotal to the whole process. So first of all, we have the absolute value of f of x minus l has to be less than epsilon. And we also have the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. So I'm going to write those two in terms of this given limit. So the first thing will be the absolute value of f of x, which is x over 4 plus 6 minus l, and l is l, uh, no, l is 11 over 2, um, and that has to be less than epsilon. So that's the first one. And then the other one is the absolute value of x minus negative 2, so the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than delta. All right, so now my goal is to make, uh, from the epsilon inequality, I want to make the absolute value of x plus 2 show up. And then I want to isolate it, and then I'm going to use that to figure out the relationship between delta and epsilon. So let's just do a little bit of algebra on the epsilon inequality. So combine things, uh, common denominator will give us this. And then um, a properties of uh, absolute value here. So the absolute value of four is just four. Um, so I can do that. I've also changed it. So the absolute value of x plus two is the absolute value that's in our delta inequality. So we're like almost there. Um, so this gives me uh, the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 4 epsilon. So at this point, if I look at it, I have these two. And that means that what I can do is I can just say that um, delta is equal to 4 epsilon. And if I do that, I'm actually ready to write my proof because I found the relationship between delta and epsilon. So we're going to prove it. So the proof. These proofs always start with, you need epsilon to be positive. So let's say given that epsilon is greater than zero. And I'm gonna say let delta equal uh, four epsilon like we found. So now I want to write uh, the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. So I need to start with that. So uh, the absolute value of x plus two is less than delta. But in this case, that just implies that the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 4e, because we said delta is equal to 4, uh, 4 epsilon, I should say, um, because we said delta equals 4 epsilon. And uh, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So now we're kind of like reversing our steps that we did um, in the work to find the relationship. So I'm back to this. Uh, I'm going to pull everything into one inequality. Uh, one absolute value, because I ultimately want it to look like this step, that second step uh, in our scrap work. And by pulling the four inside, that's going to happen. So I get this, which I can rewrite as this. And now it looks exactly like that second step, which is good, because now I need to make it look like that first step from the epsilon inequality. And so if your work is neat, you can just look at your work and say like, how do I make this one half uh, into the thing that I need, right? We need the absolute value of f of x minus l, but you already know what that is. So this is what we're going to go for. And I know that I can do it because I've already done the work in reverse. So we get that. And that means we did it, right? We have the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon, given that delta equals 4 epsilon. Um, Okay, so that means that any epsilon you give me, I can figure out a delta. Um, and uh, if I'm within that delta neighborhood, then I'm guaranteeing that the absolute value of f of x minus l is in that epsilon neighborhood. It's a good deal. So what I'm going to say is, therefore, uh, this is actually the limit. Like, that's the whole point of doing the problem. And we get that. And we're done. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the second problem. So we want to prove that the limit as x approaches 5 of the quantity 4x minus 7 is equal to 13. It's going to be the exact same process. And that's what I'm trying to illustrate here. Like linear functions, this process is always the same. 
So I write down the two inequalities that we get from the limit definition. So the absolute value of f of x minus l has to be less than epsilon, and the absolute value of x minus c has to be less than delta. So now let's rewrite those in the context of this problem. So we're replacing f of x with 4x minus 7, replacing l with 13, and we get the absolute value of 4x minus 7 minus 13 is less than epsilon. All right, so far so good. Uh, our other inequality is the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than delta. So our goal is to make the absolute value of x minus 5 show up in the epsilon um, inequality. So let's try to do that. Do a little bit of algebra, uh, factor of 4 out. So this should seem familiar because it's basically the same thing that we just did. Uh, factor of 4 out of the absolute value. And then I switched over because that x minus 5 there, the absolute value of x minus 5, is kind of our target. We were trying to make that show up because now I can see a way to relate epsilon and delta. So if I divide by 4, so at this point, I want to compare this and this. If I let delta just be epsilon over 4, then for every epsilon greater than 0, I can definitely find a delta, and I'm ready to do my proof. So the proof always starts the same. So the proof is always going to start with given that epsilon is greater than 0. And we're going to let, in this case, delta equal epsilon over 4. And we want to show that if the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, that's going to imply that the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. We just have to reverse our steps um, to make it happen. So we'll start with the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than delta, which implies that the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than epsilon over 4 by direct substitution. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by 4. To get that, I'm going to bring the 4 inside to get this. And now what I'm going to do is I look back at my scrap work and I see that I needed the where in the scrap work, the absolute value of 4x minus 20 came from simplifying the absolute value of f of x minus l. So I'm going to break up 4x minus 20 into, this is kind of like a weird step. It's not the weirdest thing you do with limits, but um, just looking at this, I don't think you would necessarily know what to do. But looking at your scrap work, you know that 4x minus 20 is the result of 4x minus 7 minus 13. So that is what we're going to make it look like. And you can tell that that works because if you just combine them again, you're back to 4x minus 20. Um, so we did it. We showed that if the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than delta, where delta equals epsilon over 4, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. That's what we wanted to prove. Um, and so now I'm going to say, therefore, this is actually the limit. So we did it. All right, so if you practice a couple of the linear ones, uh, they're not going to give you any trouble. Uh, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.